Welcome back to the JSFL Week 12. We're in the Sunday 1 o'clock game where we got the 6 and 5 Houston Enforcers. Come to the 6 and 5 Detroit Power. Detroit resting some of their starters like Taylor Little, Hugh Brooks, and Zachary Bryan and Sammy Hansen, but they're still play at some points in the game. Besides Taylor Little, I think he's completely benched. They don't have a backup QB, so Sean Richardson is starting today. Besides that, it's kind of rested. So Houston already out of the playoffs because the, the other 1 p.m. game, Phoenix and LA, that's going to decide who takes that six seed. Yeah, that should be interesting. If you're a Detroit or Houston fan, you're probably watching this game because Houston, last game of the year in Detroit. Here's the power thing. Sucks for Houston because they had a shot, but it sucks that the schedule wasn't in their favor. So let's get into it. We'll go in the key moments. We don't do th we only do um red zone opportunities for the first quarter, so. I also wanna listen real quick. I gotta change the controller so I'm not clean as a team. But hopefully my Detroit Power can rest their stars and still get the win. Steve Watts, a really reliable second second string back, should be able to help us. But we don't have Hugh Brooks playing starter, so let's see if he can do anything. Or Houston, red zone. But we don't have our star corners starting, they're backups. Okay. Besides that, every defensive player is starting because we don't have backups. So. Oh, okay. Fourth and seven, I guess. So, Houston trying to get a field goal. Pick up. It is good. Enforcers got on the board. So Houston, I mean Detroit gets into the red zone, even though they're not having their star key piece and Taylor Little or Hugh Brooks. They've been managing it without them. They're hoping to make a playoff run this year. It's kind of been shaky their last couple of games. They've had quite a few losses. But they're looking for a better start to the playoffs when they're probably going to face. They're either facing LA or Phoenix in the first game. They're hosting them, so they'll stay at home, at least for the first game. If they win that game, they're not going to be at home. Offensive breakdown, nine rush, nine pass, but that's for Houston, I believe. So. Here's Richardson throwing. Oh, no, it's Hector McDaniel because he, Otisteli is resting. He's the backup, so he could be playing, but it's probably McDaniel, the faster guy. Otis is more the catching guy. That was Hector McDaniel's two catches, 19 yards. Newton Fitch, he's trying to get to the sack leader, but he has to go against a hard offensive line. Here's Steve Watts. 12 rushes, 47 yards on the day so far for him. Not bad. 3.9 averaging per carry. Pretty good. Especially against this Houston defense, which is pretty good. Try right, looking for a score here. Single coverage at the top, I think that's Theodore Norman. Here's a run. Ooh, Watts is stuffed in the backfield. Now we're going that play. Good play there by Houston. Hayden McKee in the backfield on that play. That linebacking core, the only thing a little shaky in Houston's defense. Secondary is good. D line. Uh just extraordinary in the linebackers. They're not that great. It's only really good linebackers on Clemens, so. 
second and goal. Here is Watts again. He's not going to get very far, only yard at most. Here's third and goal. I think he ought to go to the air. Still got some playmakers. Cedar Norman had that hat trick in a couple weeks. That was a while ago, actually. That was like seven weeks ago, I think. But Hector McDaniel, really underrated tight end. He's pretty high overall. He's really quick. Here is Richardson scrambling. He's five rushing TDs. Add another one. That's six on the season. Sean Richardson into the end zone. He gets the touchdown. And Detroit on the board in the second quarter. Scrambles out. Linebackers can't really, didn't know he was going to scramble for it. He hasn't done a scrambling touchdown since he played the Pirates, which was in. That was, my bad, let me look for it. Alright, Pirates in week six, so he hasn't had a rushing touchdown for six weeks. And that will end, actually end us our first half, 3 7. Put it down there, but we do that in the second half, so we'll get to that. Oh, no, that would that would be Richardson's seventh rushing touchdown. I guess he had another one past the Cleveland game. So he has 19 touchdowns in the air, seven on the ground. The 26 TDs for Sean Richardson. But a third and two for Houston. They want to keep the chains moving. They want to end the final game of the season with a win. Especially on the road. Here is Norris, the rookie. He gets it to the 38. He's going to be competing with Ted Evans next year for that starting spot. And so that run game should be a triple headed dog threat. David Medina. Top three linebacker and stats wise. He gets that tackle. Norris had a really good rookie season. Him and Ted Evans have just been competing back and forth. He was the second back pick this year. Ted Evans was selected before him. Here's third and ten now for the enforcers. Carl White looking to throw. Throwing this one delivered. It's Bobby Murphy. Bobby Murphy to the 22. And it's a first down Houston. Four catches, 41 yards on the day for Bobby Murphy. Carl White, this could be his last game as a starter for Houston. Because Warren Jones coming next season. There's no way White's getting the job over Jones. So he will be a backup next year. Red zone alert for the enforcers at the four yard line, first and goal. And Detroit plays shut down red zone defense. They've done pretty good at that this season. One of the best in teams in the league at doing it, actually. Them and LA are really good at it. I'd say the best, too. I don't know why, but Detroit's red zone defense, whenever I've seen it, it's really good. But we'll have to see if that theory can be proven right now, right here, in week 12. 
Their number one corners aren't in, though. So, Percy, Curtis Townsend, and Percy Holloway going to have to do some good things. His first and goal, throwing Carl White Dock down is David Medina. Medina probably saves a touchdown that probably could have been. And second and goal now for the Enforcers. The four yard line, we'll see if they go for Norris on the ground or maybe even Howard Morgan. Howard Morgan probably be more effective in the spot, but maybe they go through the air. 12 rushes, 18 passing. A little more of a passing offense there. Here's White again throwing. Hit. Oh, dropped at the one. Great saving tackle. Third and goal at the one yard line. Sean Erickson with that catch. Can the enforcers cash it in or can Detroit play it at the line of scrimmage better than Houston? I told you the red zone defense pretty well. Only allowed three, pa three yards in that play. Some teams probably would have let that touchdown happened, but look how many people from Detroit rally enough to get that saving tackle. I think that will help us in the playoffs. But I haven't, they haven't, they haven't forced a fourth down yet. It's third and goal. One more play. Come on, Detroit. Third and goal. Here comes the Howard Morgan touchdown, Houston. I spoke too soon. The Enforcers and Howard Morgan score, and they take the lead in the third Q quarter. Howard Morgan, he has been the power back for this team, and that's his first touchdown of the season. Surprisingly, that's Morgan's first touchdown. Red zone alert for Houston again. We'll see if Detroit can play any better. Okay, I their rushing defense could be better in Detroit, but the passing defense I I haven't seen one in the red zone happen many very often. Please don't get a passing touchdown now. But again, we don't have our starting cute cornerbacks. Second and four. Here's White going up the middle. It's shot first thing roll to five. 214 yards for White on the day. Zero touchdowns, zero interceptions. Though. He is known to throwing a lot of interceptions. That's Rudy Brooke with the catch. Four receptions, 58 yards from Carl White throwing a lot of interceptions this season. Let's look at his TD to interception ratio. Nine touchdowns, 15 interceptions. Not been good. At least once, 10 touchdowns to end the season, I would hope. You can't tie those interceptions, but. Here's a rush up the middle. It's Norris. He can't get there. Second and goal. Norris 10 rushes 28 yards. He's kind of been stuffed today. Only 2.8 yards per carry. Houston wanting to extend it to a two possession game here in the fourth quarter. Still nine minutes to play. At the one yard line. Can Houston cash it in? Second and goal. Watch for that receiver in the slot. Second and goal. No, but they go to the ground. Norris is shut down. Third and goal. It might be too. It might be too much yards for Morgan to go. So, air. They probably have to travel here. I, if in that situation, I probably would use Morgan again. But they go for Norris, and it does not seem to successful. Third and goal for the Enforcers. Four receivers. Here is White throwing touchdown, Houston. Spoke wrong again. That time it is. I think that is Jay Haynes. Yes, the slot receiver. And Jay Haynes gets into the end zone. That is his fourth touchdown of the season. Now he leads his team to touchdown receptions. And that's Carl White's 10th touchdown throwing of the year. Oh, Detroit scores. At the 12 yard line, Detroit trying to take the lead late in the fourth quarter. It's been a nail biter here in Detroit. They've been using backups and they're 
Well, not all backups, so it's kind of still. But Detroit has a small disadvantage on having their star piece in Taylor Little. And their corners are backups as well. And they don't have Otis Stelly, the great possession receiver. But Hector McDaniel isn't bad. A little above three minutes left to play in this fourth quarter. Now less than three minutes. Turnovers, Cleveland has won. Off the break. Oh, I think they threw an interception. I think Carl went through an interception. Here's Richardson, stepping up. He gets eight yards. Seven rushes, 45 yards, and two TDs. Oh, wow, he's rushed for two touchdowns? Then that's eight touchdowns on the season running. Hmm. Second and two. I think White threw another interception. Here's Richardson throwing. Caught touchdown. Detroit Power. It's Noel Munoz, the fullback. The fullback with the touchdown. And Detroit takes the lead. Wow, getting creative for Detroit. Pull back with six. Now Carl White is going to have to play big. If he gets anywhere, we'll block it. Okay, with 26 seconds left, Carl White needs a touchdown to win this game here in Detroit. First and goal, 26 Seconds left on the clock, two timeouts, and at the two-yard line. They've done pretty good in the red zone, two touchdowns in the red zone, and they get a third to beat Detroit. I mean, I hope Detroit can go 7-5, and five, but 6-6, six and six, still in the playoffs, because our division kind of stunk, stunk this year. But we'll still have the third seed, because Charlotte also sucked. Until this end of the season, they're doing pretty good. It would be a playoff team, but I don't know this year if they'll be a playoff team. Josh Jameson's inconsistent play. First and goal. Here's White. On first and goal, he touched down. The Enforcers take the lead again. It's Vaughn Peters. His fourth touchdown of the season. Vaughn Peters, a great play. And the Enforcers. Take the lead with only 20, a little over 20 seconds left to go. And that's the game. 24-21 is your final score in Detroit. The Enforcers end off the season 7-5. Not making the playoffs, but it was a great run. They started off the season pretty bad, and then it got a lot better. That game against Phoenix really determined if they are going to be in the playoffs, but they... Choked it and it sucks. They started two and four, climbed all the way back to seven and five to end the season. Great year for horses. I'm excited to see what they do next year. Warren Jones should be great. I'm excited to see the Houston team. But good fight put up by Detroit in a lot of their backups. And they go six and six, but we'll see them next week in the playoffs. And I'm excited for the playoffs because, and I get to see who um I'll be facing in the next game. When I it's the battle for the playoffs. Will Phoenix or LA be our winner? But you should check that right now. Is it is gonna be in Phoenix? So we'll have to watch that. I'm gonna go do that right now. So Richardson, he lost, but he got up, put up a good fight with his backups. He didn't have Hugh Brooks to throw to, so that has to hurt. I'll see you at Phoenix.